Welcome on in WIP Daily, Joe Giglio with you. Appreciate everyone downloading, following the podcast here. And of course, our video feed, 94 WIP, our YouTube page, where we put up a lot of our videos and our podcasts. And of course, Tucker joins me on those and he'll be uh, hopping on in a few minutes to give his thoughts on this. As you know, we get closer to about a month away from NFL training camp, Eagles training camp opening. And it's kind of been this underlying thing with the Eagles offseason as they try to retool, get better, make another run at a, at a Lombardi, you know, within their own division, the improvement and, or lack thereof of some of the teams. I think Washington is a team that is kind of muddled and just stuck in whatever they're doing. I don't believe in Sam Howell or sets a stopgap. I don't view Washington as a threat at all. The Giants uh, were formidable last year, came on. Daniel Jones got better. I think their coach has, has some ability and, and might be able to lift that franchise. But, you know, I, I think they're going to probably take a little step back. Tough schedule. It's the Cowboys. I mean, that that's where – if there is a challenge this division, and it's been this way for a long time, it's the Cowboys. And there's this assumption that the gap last year was gigantic between the Eagles and Cowboys. And I think there was a gap. The Eagles are their best or better than the Cowboys are their best. But if you look at some of the numbers, you go back and really think about last season, it wasn't. So they split the games. Obviously, the Eagles won the one against Cooper Rush here in Philadelphia. The Cowboys won the game down in Dallas uh, when Jalen Hurts didn't play and Gardner Mitch, who did. But you look at last year, the Eagles won the division – with 14 wins, Cowboys had 12. The Eagles had to bring Jalen Hurts back on a bum shoulder week 18 just to clinch that division. So going into week 18 through 17 weeks, the gap was one game in this division. The point differential last year between you know of these teams, the, the Eagles' point differential was just a little bit better than the Dallas Cowboys last year, just a little bit. I mean, the Eagles, actually, as I look at it now, the Eagles scored 344 points Okay, last year. Uh, they scored 477. They allowed 344. The Cowboys scored 467, allowed 342. So it was very close. I mean, it really was very close last year. Almost a negligible point differential. The two teams, very similar. Uh, the Eagles allowed eight more points. They scored 10 more points. I mean, very similar in terms of the whole body of work for the season. Obviously, the Eagles did what they did in the playoffs. And here we are heading into 2023. And we know no team has won this division in back-to-back -back years in 20 years. The Eagles are the favorites. They should be the favorites, but we know it hasn't mattered in the NFC, uh, especially this division, the NFC East. Here's where I'm at on this. I I think Dallas has closed the gap. Whatever gap was there, I don't think it is it is gigantic. I, I really don't. I, I think this is pretty even entering this year. I give the Eagles a slight edge. The history tells me the Cowboys probably will win the division because that's just what happens. But I, I think this gap has been closed this offseason by the moves each team has made. I think the Cowboys have gotten themselves a little bit better. And I think the Eagles have gotten themselves to a point where they're going to start the season a little bit worse than they were last year. Now, here's the hope with the Eagles and, and the idea of, of what they could be, especially on defense. The offense feels like a, a little bit, and we'll get to the coordinator stuff, but a little turnkey. I mean, really, the offense should just go. They have almost everyone back. They'll replace the right guard. They're changing out running backs, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, they're probably more talented at running back now than they were last year. But the big spots on offense, the quarterback, the the weapons, the you know the pass catching weapons, right tackle, left tackle, center, it's all there. You know, a, a, a star left guard in Dickerson, it's all there. So the offense should go. But the Eagles' defense, I, I expect to have bumps and bruises first half of the season. I, I just a lot of new starters. You can't just lose six starters off a Super Bowl team and say we're going to be fine without acquiring veteran level, star level talent. They didn't do that. I mean, they didn't. The Eagles have major question marks, major question marks at linebacker, at safety. And they are hoping, crossing their fingers, that one or both of Jordan Davis and or Jalen Carter are just ready to replace the production of, of Javon Hargrave. I, and I find it hard to believe from day one those guys will do that. Now, maybe it's like the Chiefs last year. You know, the Chiefs last year went having a lot of rookies, Carl Loftus, McDuffie, and it was it was pretty rough halfway through the season. and But then they figured it out. They got better. And by the time the playoffs rolled around, the Chiefs' defense was Super Bowl worthy. Eagles still put up a lot of points on them in the Super Bowl, but you know they beat the Jaguars. They beat the Bengals because they were a Super Bowl-worthy defense. The Eagles could be that. And by the end of the year, we could get there. But on paper right now, Dallas has a better defense. They have a more ready-made, you know, I can count on them week-to-week -week defense right now. The Eagles are not going to be a 70-sack defense. They have to replace Jonathan Gannon, which I'm sure everyone – but yeah, I'm sure every one of you out there is like, yeah, I got to get Gannon out of here. We'll see if Sean decides is good. And we'll see if the defense could be as, as cohesive as it was a year ago. So I think the Cowboys have closed the gap on defense because 
they're bringing back a lot of continuity. They added Stephon Gilmore to go on the other side of what they have with Trayvon Diggs. They have Micah Parsons, who might win a defensive player of the year at any moment. I mean, that's how good he is. So the Cowboys defense will have less points last year. The Eagles defense lost six starters and now have to replace those guys with rookies and or young guys like a blanket ship, or we're talking about guys you're hoping to make a leap like the Kobe Dean or Jordan Davis or some sort of stopgap player like Terrell, Terrell Edmonds or maybe another rookie in, in Sidney Brown. But again, that's a lot of rookies that are going to a lot of playing time. Rookies make mistakes in the NFL. So on the defensive side of the ball, I think the Dallas Cowboys have closed the gap on the Eagles. And I think the Cowboys have the better defense right now. Now on offense, the Eagles should still be better. Their quarterback play last year was better than what the Cowboys got out of Dak Prescott. And it really wasn't even close because Dak had a really, for him, odd year of a lot of a lot of turnovers. Usually not a super big turnover guy. He was last year and it killed the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys added Brandon Cooks. I think that will help them in the pass game. They really missed Amari Cooper last year. We'll see if Gallup comes back now that you're healthier. And obviously what they have with CeeDee Lamb. Uh, losing Zeke I don't think is going to hurt Dallas that much. Again, no one wants him. He hasn't signed yet. Pollard feels like he'll he'll be the guy as long as he's healthy. And I thought the acquisition they made in the draft of, of Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State was a good late round back. So the Cowboys offense should be good. Eagles offense should be better. But the Brandon Cooks acquisition helps them. And it, it's going to be fascinating to watch to see how the coaching changes on offense for both teams make them better, make them worse, or, or just kind of are the same. So we know the Eagles lost Shane Sykin. And I think the Brian Johnson hire was the right one. It makes sense. He's here. Rising coach, quarterback coach, Jalen Hurts' guy. Someone else would have probably hire Brian Johnson if the Eagles didn't and Steichen, you know, had stayed here. But I have a question mark about this offense and its viability and how good it's going to be until I see it succeed without Shane Steichen calling the plays. Just go to the two years Sirianni's been here, the Sirianni-Hurts combination. We've watched the offense. It's, it's been two offenses. It was the Nick Sirianni play calling. Didn't work. Shane Sykin play calling. The Eagles have basically won every game they've played or, or, you know, an enormous amount, like probably, I don't know, 75% of games they've played, you know, since Shane Sykin took over the play calling middle of the season in 2021, all the way through last year. It's been a dynamic offense and it was, it was getting better and better all the way through the Super Bowl, what we saw. He's gone now. He's in Indianapolis. Now, can Brian Johnson – just take that and run with it. Will he have some growing pains? I, I don't know. Also, the league's going to adjust a little bit to what the Eagles did last year. So that all kind of factors in here to th this situation with the Eagles offense. Then you go to the Cowboys offense. They lost Kellen Moore. Seems like they're you know they're kind of pushing that as addition by subtraction. You know, there's some of the quotes from McCarthy make it seem like it's from the Stone Age. But I do wonder if maybe ball control, you know, longer drives – you know, less time for the defense on the field. They're more rested. The Cowboys win a different way. It might actually play in their favor, less turnovers. You know, we'll see what it is. At some point you have to score. But the Cowboys were too loosey-goosey on offense last year. So we'll see if the, the switch back to McCarthy calling the plays helps them. That that we'll find out. The other thing, and then we'll get to Tucker and, and really talk about the, these two teams when they play each other because it has kind of been one-sided the wrong direction. The other factor that, you know – plays into this division and plays into the gap between these two teams is how healthy are the two quarterbacks going to be? Because recently they haven't been, I mean, Jalen Hurts only been a starter for two years, but he's missed time in both years. And Dak Prescott went from being a very durable quarterback early in his career to now one that misses time. He, he just, he misses time, right? He had the horrific injury years ago. And then, you know, it's the calf or it's this, it's why Cooper Rush had to come in and play last year. This division a lot of times comes down to which starting quarterback plays the most games. And if you're telling me right now, both these guys play the full 17 games, it's probably an Eagles division again. They're probably going to break the streak and, and win it. But if Dak stays healthy for 16 or 17 and Jalen Hurts misses three or four or, or even two, that could be the difference. It was almost the difference last year. It, it, it was almost – the Cowboys almost took this division last year because – Jalen Hurts missed time, and they couldn't beat the Cowboys without him. They couldn't beat the Saints without him. And they had to drag him back on the field against the Giants in Week 18 just to basically just be a decoy and hand the ball off and make the Giants wary that he might run the football or throw it deep down the field. Like, that's how bad it was without him. So, you know, I think there's a perception that the Eagles are way better than Dallas. And I think when, you know, 
rubber hits the road and it's the playoffs and both these teams are in, we know who we're going to trust. The smarter team, usually the more well-coached team, team that makes less mistakes. Like, you know, we've seen this story with the Cowboys before. This isn't really about the Cowboys' viability as a Super Bowl contender because I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl. But in this division, have they closed the gap? Tucker, I, I think the, Eagles, the Cowboys have closed the gap on the Eagles. I, I thought the Cooks edition was a good one. I thought the Gilmore edition was a good one. Their defense is probably better. And I, I just think the gap that people assume between the two teams was bigger than the reality was last year when, when you kind of dive back into it. Yeah, and I, I think maybe it's just due to the disdain of Cowboys and Cowboys fans here in Philadelphia that, that people tend to not realize how one-sided this rivalry has been really head-to-head. I mean, Dak Prescott 7-1. and one against the Eagles in his last eight starts. The Eagles are, are three and eight against the Cowboys in their last 11 matchups overall dating back to what the, the end of 2017. And you know, the one thing I thought you brought up was interesting is there's a lot of unknown with the Eagles, and it's a matter of if those guys can kind of fix the Cowboys or, or be better than what the Cowboys have running back. And like we know what Mike McCarthy is as a play caller. It's been a while. He hasn't done it since he was in Green Bay, but – he, he's a pretty competent play caller for a guy who's kind of viewed as a buffoon and, and kind of silly uh, around the NFL. I think the one thing he does well is command an offense and, and call plays. So I think that would certainly be something. And you look at the Eagles. I mean, the amount of roster turnover they had, especially defensively, you have two new coordinators coming in. Certainly they have talent. Certainly I think the way Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni have built staffs in the past, I, I think they deserve the benefit of the doubt, but there is a scenario where Sean Desai is a, a, you know, a failure. There is a scenario where Brian Johnson maybe takes four or five weeks to, to figure things out. And by that point, it, it's maybe too late. The Eagles are two and three and then about to head into a, a really tough stretch of their schedule that I, I think we're going to keep talking about until we get to week nine when they play the Cowboys and the Chiefs and the Bills and the 49ers and then the Cowboys and then the Seahawks again. But I, I think the one thing with this team – I think the Eagles have a higher ceiling. Uh, I think the Eagles right now with the amount of top end talent they have, like if you kind of go position by position, I, I think they have more talent on their roster, but the amount of unknowns right now, I think their floor right now is significantly lower than the Cowboys are barring any sort of injury to, to either team. At that, that point, the floor, because the Cowboys are, are coming off a back to back 12 win seasons. It's, it's, like if you if you ever asked right now to list the teams that have won twelve games in the last two years, you know, in each year, I think people would leave the Cowboys off the list. I mean, the list isn't very long anyway. It's the Chiefs, um, maybe the Bengals. If we go back to, I'm trying to look who won twelve games last year. Maybe the Niners, right? Like it's a small list of teams that have won that many games. Bills in back to back years. The Cowboys are on, and they haven't gone past the second round. It's just, it's their story. It's hilarious. They can't they can't win in the playoffs. But the floor, right? The ceiling. I agree with Tucker. The Eagles' ceiling is just higher. It's it's why they are considered more of a Super Bowl team, why, why the odds say they are the NFC favorite, all that kind of stuff. But for this division, the the floor, like if things don't go right, the Cowboys, you know, you kind of I, – I, I'm at the point now, where, barring a major injury to Dak, I kind of pencil them in 10, 11 wins. I just – that's probably what they're going to win. And they've won 12 in the last few years. But just – let's say 10, 11. You know, if the Eagles have some issues here with that schedule, it could – it could be nine or 10 or 11, right? Like it doesn't, that that's, there's just a real scenario where that plays out. I think the gap has been closed. Um, I think it's, it's, it's the gap between these two teams. If it was last year, Eagles were here and the Cowboys were here. I think it's way closer to this. You know, I think it's way closer to, to even, and the Eagles as a slight favorite, I, I would pick them to win the division. I think they're going to find a way to pull it out and be the first team because I think Jalen Hurts, will play at a level to where he's better than Dak Prescott. And that kind of moves the needle that much. But this division was not a run. Like everything went right injury-wise, coaching-wise, schedule-wise, MVP quarterback play for the Eagles last year. They got all of those things. And yet they needed to take the field in week 18 to clinch this division. Tells you it was pretty darn close last year. The Cowboys got a little bit better. The Eagles have probably gotten a little bit worse, at least until they – they soar through these things. But as we, we sit here in late June, I think the gap is is not much between the Eagles and the Cowboys. Now, maybe by December, the Eagles have widened that gap and opened it up, and here we go again from the playoff run. But I think we're headed for a division race. Last year felt like the Eagles were front runners, and the Cowboys caught them at the end, and then it was even by the end, you know, until week 18 where it was decided. This year feels like it could be neck and neck between the Eagles and the Cowboys 
all season long. Appreciate everyone listening. WIP Daily. Let us know what you think. Send some feedback. Obviously, the YouTube page you can comment on. And, of course, send us uh, <clears throat> messages on social media about the show, about your opinion on this, and subscribe. WIP Daily, wherever you get your podcast, follow it. And the 94 WIP YouTube page. We'll talk tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to WIP Daily.